Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox, the instructor of the Big Data Applications and Analytics course uh, here. Um, we are going through uh, the introduction to the course, which is um, consists of uh, five lessons. This whole thing is one unit. Uh, this is the fourth lesson, which is going through the actual um, units of the course, telling you a little bit about each unit. And we're on our, there are three lessons that go through the units. We just finished the first of those lessons, and now we're on the second of those lessons, doing a roughly of one third of the units, presumably. Okay, so we discussed the, the last uh, units we discussed were those for physics. After physics in the, uh, on, the, on the web page becomes um, use cases. I should note that I don't always set the um, viewing in the same order as they appear on the web page, but this is this description here is the order on the web pages. And we have this use case survey, which uh, was done by NIST. Uh, I, I helped, uh, I and many others helped NIST do this. And uh, we collected 51 use cases. And that came from a process, so called Big Data Public Working Group, which was a Pretty interesting process done by volunteers in an open fashion. Uh, because NIST only does open things, it's trying to do things of general value to industry and academia. I would say most of the people involved in this were from industry with a sizable number from academia. There were various working groups, uh, definition and taxonomies, in particular that defined what big data was, and we'll discuss that. The so called reference architecture, which describes the uh, Set up of, compu of computing subsystems, a very uh, effective group on security and privacy, and a somewhat difficult group because it was dealing with the future, the technology roadmap. And that one had trouble because it had to do with the future when even the current situation was still being defined. Uh, the work which described after that came from this uh, subgroup requirements and use cases, which I was one of the co chairs of. Then those 51 use cases were divided into broad areas, government, commercial, defense, or national security, healthcare and life sciences, medicine, biology, deep learning and social networks, uh, so-called research ecosystem like accelerators. Uh, the astronomy and physics had lots of use cases. Environment, earth, and polar science had lots of use cases. And we should have had more, but we only had one energy use case. We go through the actual use cases, and then we go through their features. And I label the use cases by nifty characteristics. Um, and as part of those features, I discuss aspects of the features. Like I use that as an excuse to discuss the difference between SQL and so-called NoSQL, uh, traditional object relational databases, and other things like HBase or Big uh, Big Table, which are uh, Sort of got whose development got spurred by the web, and I go through uh, other classifications such as pleasingly parallel, local machine learning, geographical information system users, and so on. And that's done in these. That's this last uh, unit of the uh, use case survey um, section. So remember, we have sections, units, lessons. And um, after that uh, sort of pretty difficult, uh, or at least um, robust uh, section on uh, use cases, because it's full of detail, which is not easy to, 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 uh, to cope with. We have uh, what I call the side MOOC, just to, to, to discussing this little software called PlotViz. Uh, which um, we're actually re-looking at to see if we can't do it in an easier fashion using modern web technology. And it, but this is a, a Windows technology application. It's got some motivation introduction to its use. And then we go through five examples of various um, very simple things like cubes and structured data set. Then we have sort of really more complicated cases, proteomics. And how you can look up a couple of them. Um, you can look in a synchronized fashion at different, um, the same data set 
Well, actually, you're looking at the, the you're synchronizing the rotations because in a 3D viewer you can rotate them. If you want, to, if you say take a data set in 3D and classify it in two different ways, as you browse one way, you might want the other way of classifying it to to actually rotate in the same fashion, so you can compare the classifications in more detail. Then we go through features of PlotVis and a larger data sample. And then we go to the final tools and examples, um, which, uh, which are given here. So this is a reasonably uh, useful piece of software. <coughs> it's not actually a key part of this course. It's just useful uh, when uh, looking at some of the results to use PlotVis, particularly for clustering. because. Clustering labels things, and if you actually can see it in three dimensions, the human eye is able to pick up things much more clearly than uh, uh, other ways of processing uh, data. All right, here we have the next units, which are a section on. So this is one section, that section has three units. And it's for the use case of e-commerce, which I sometimes call lifestyle informatics. And it actually discusses in great detail recommender systems, which are key technology. So that when you're watching uh, Netflix, it, uh, it can give recommendations for what you want to look at. Or when you're buying things online, that's a more common case probably. It can recommend to you what you think you might look at, which it does by very clever techniques which relate you to other people and see what other people did. And so they allow you to make the best the best use of your time. And I say this supports all these things like the so-called long tail, that um, it allows you to find difficult, uh, I mean, not so common things, because you are near somebody else who found something rather uncommon to be very valuable. And uh, we point out that all these things are optimization problems. And you could say most of the world is um, an optimization problem. And uh, after that general discussion, we go through uh, the general definition of what a recommender system is. We go through this nifty uh, system, um, website called Kaggle, which hosts all sorts of competitions, including the famous uh, Netflix competition. Uh, we give many examples of where recommender systems are used, which I say includes Netflix. Netflix has a bunch of slides about how they do what they do. And they have what they call consumer data science, which is what underlies Netflix. And uh, then we have a recap of what a net recommender system is, uh, more examples. We formulate them in the so-called vector space model, and we actually discuss uh, this. The, we actually, this is also in the motivation. We discuss how, how in these uh, problems you take uh, systems, map them into spaces. And then you look at distances, especially distances in that space. And some spaces are vector spaces and have scalar products, others don't. Then we have, uh, there are multiple um, recommender systems, so-called user-based, item-based, content-based. And uh, collaborative filtering is a particular approach to recommender systems, but a very powerful, important approach. And they're built on Kate nearest neighbor methods. And we also use this as an excuse for discussing high dimensional spaces, because these things here are in the space which is of size um, uh, equal to the number of items or equal to the number of users. And in each case, they're not enormous, whether they're a billion or a 10 million, I don't know, but uh, they're big. Now we have the so-called side MOOCs, and in this case, it's discussing these technologies. Uh, in particular, how to do k-nearest neighbor algorithm in Python or Java. How to do visualization of, of the results, um, testing that algorithm. We discuss clustering, I remember that's why I told you, that's why I wanted to introduce PlotVis before we did this section. Clustering is a technique which is broadly used in lots of cases and effectively classifies the world into points that are near each other. Because a cluster is a group of points that are near each other. Sometimes it's obvious what a cluster is because all the other points are far away. Other times it's just some sort of gray classification where uh, there is no um, 
Um, there's no dramatic difference. There, there's just a smooth variation, and you're just finding points near each other. Um, so we look at clustering uh, in the recommender system case, and then we discuss that in set multiple clusters, more than three. We look at the uh, general aspects of clustering, including local optima, and we look at the general issue of heuristics in uh, computer science algorithms. Heuristics are very important. They're methods which are not precise methods, but they're methods that actually work. So anything that works should be looked at uh, thoughtfully. Um, the next, uh, now we move to a, a new section. That section has uh, four units, one unit on parallel computing and three units on clouds. Um, parallel computing is a very old unit, it's about um, 30 years old. It describes the basic concept of decomposition, which underlies parallel computing. Uh, when you're using parallel computing to, um, I don't know, to decide what you want to buy, uh, one approach would be to decompose everything you want to buy between different uh, cores or nodes of a parallel computer and analyze your interest on those on those items in parallel. Uh, we then point out the society has a lot of intrinsic parallel computing. And if you do a task like building some giant building where you have lots of bricklayers or people involved, that's a very good example of parallel computing. So this is just a very, this is not E standard computer science, um, rather difficult introduction to parallel computing. This is a general intuitive introduction to parallel computing. So uh, this section has uh, five units. The first we just discussed, parallel computing. Then we have four units, so many more discussing cloud computing, because that's um, much nearer the focus of this course, although parallel computing is a wonderful area. It's my probably greatest expertise. So these four units uh, cover a wide range of topics. They start off by discussing what the National Science Foundation calls cyber infrastructure. And that's for the general problem, E more or less anything, or more or less anything dash informatics. Then we go and look at what is cloud computing with some party line view. Uh, NIST has a very good uh, view and also several other views. Then we go to one of our favorite sources, Gartner, who has uh, uh, these various uh, landscapes and hype curves and things like that. And they're done for various subsets of the, uh, of the cloud computing uh, ecosystem, big data, clouds, etc. Then we do a couple of simple examples from Microsoft and Google of uh, the use of cloud computing, and then we actually go to um, things in more detail. What is cloud computing in more detail? We focus on the cloud architecture, uh, looking at network as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. We go through platform as a service in more detail. Then we have a, a long discussion of the uh, so-called HPC ABDS. ABDS stands for Apache Big Data Stack. And this provides a software stack with a set of around 300 uh, components, which really tells you how big data is processed. We do cloud uh, architectures, data center architectures, including a, a discussion of the players in the field. And then we go to a Gartner analysis, which goes through the major infrastructure as a service vendors. And we do four in detail, um, Amazon, the dominant force, Microsoft, Google, and Rackspace. And it's amazing how much bigger uh, Amazon is than all the others. We look at a short lesson in cloud storage trends, things like Dropbox and things. And then we go through applications, including those in science, discussing uh, what, what the structure is of a typical cloud application. We have comments on security in clouds, it's obviously a very important area. And we have comments on fault tolerance. And that fault tolerance is both sort of real fault tolerance. I mean, the problem gave the, the cloud gave the wrong answer, or just performance faults. I mean, it runs too slowly, where you come into things like synchronization constraints that uh, if you have applications that need to coordinate and they have to, then if you have a, something slow or some Virtualization overhead, you will get uh, lowered performance. 
In the last unit, we go through the 10 data access patterns that Bob Marcus from the NIST activity introduced. We look at uh, data in the cloud, and um, from a sort of architectural point of view, and also data process, big data processing from an application perspective, focusing on commercial um, approaches. So that's uh, this pretty comprehensive discussion of cloud computing. It's not going to give you the same as the cloud courses in the data science curriculum, because those courses are really going to tell you the details of how to use Hadoop. And then we'll go through many different things from what we do here. Here we're just doing very general issues, trying to give you an overview of what clouds are and what they do and how they fit in with everything else we're discussing. So that's the uh, end of this this lesson in the introduction, and I thank you for listening to it. Thank you.